Yeah, when you think about Sunday morning, I think about it's time to come round God, to listen to him, listen to his word, what he's got to put into our lives, to feed off God, to feast off God, you know, so that he can equip us for the week and time ahead, you know. And there's time of worship, time of prayer, but it's all around God, what, what we're going to receive from God and, uh, and our responses to God as well. It's all part of the whole thing, isn't it? And I just hope God will encourage you this morning uh, by the things I've got to share. I want to talk about some things here that I think uh, uh, mean something to you, but I won't put a title on it. Um, uh, Jesus was, uh, he had a lot of people following him, you know, and um, uh, they started grumbling because he said something difficult. How many times do we grumble when God says something difficult? <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, why are you grumbling, you know, and, and so there was. And, and he said, look, no one can come to me anyway except my father draws them. In other words, there's all these people gathering around thinking they were in the in crowd, but in actual fact they hadn't really come to him, you know. They were, and they all went away, you know. But Jesus said, no man can come to me except my Father draws them. And if you look back over time, if I look back over my life, I knew God was drawing me. We might not have that awareness. Little things happening here and there, indications even before we knew about Jesus or who God was or his name, God it was drawing us to that place that we could honestly come to and say, Lord, I love you, I believe in you, I trust you, I want to follow you. See? So no man can come to me, Jesus, except the Father draws him. It's God drawing you. That's something you can ask yourself, you know. Uh, there's some people who've come to him, there's some people that might not be at that place yet, but it's God drawing you. You're in a good place to start with anyway. <laughs> this is the place where you're going to hear about it more. So obviously that will add to things, won't it? Um, uh, Jesus said to the disciples, he, didn't, he wasn't just talking to Peter in Matthew 16 17. He said, but who do you say I am? But Peter, as usual, sticks his neck out, you know. I think we all need to be a bit like that, don't we? Sticking our neck out a bit more for Jesus. Instead of being one of the crowd who hang back, Peter was sticking his neck out. He's always sticking his neck out, wasn't he? Oh, I walk on the water, Jesus. <laughs> what have I let myself in for help? You know? But, you know, we do need to stick our neck out for God and uh, own it, own that moment. You won't regret it. It might seem as if you're going to regret it, but... <laughs> Jesus says, who do, they say, who do you say? And Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou. Oh, isn't that a lovely thing to say to someone? Those words, blessed art thou. You know, That's such a, a sense of adoration there, and love and compassion. and There's such a wholeness of love going to Peter there. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood, religion hasn't revealed this to you. Men haven't, organisations haven't revealed this to you. But my Father, which is in heaven, he's, he's shown this to you. He's been drawing you, and now he's brought you to the place where he's shown you that I am the Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, isn't that wonderful? So, he was being drawn, now he was in that place of coming to Christ. And it's a personal revelation in all of our hearts, wh wh whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you've been in, whatever life's like for you, it's always a personal revelation that you can say, Thou art the Christ, I believe in you, I'm going to put my neck on the line, you know, I'm going to stand up there and take hold of you. That's the way it is, you know. Um, in, in 1 Peter, um, 1 Peter 1, 22, 25. It says, since you have, this is talking to believers here, you know, since you have purified your souls and abandoned the truth, the word of God, yeah, 
through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently. Not just love one another, but fervently love one another. There's a bit more to go, isn't there, for us sometimes, you know. With a pure heart. Having been born again, because we're born again not of the corruptible seed, but the incorruptible seed through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. It lives and abides in us forever, you know, when we're born again. And, um, do you know when two people get married, it's a, it's a wonderful time, they find one another in this world and they feel, I've got a partner, I've got a wife, I've got a husband that I can live with and enjoy being with. Then sometimes later on, a child is born. But you know, in that marriage, it, when a child is born, there's a conception, there's a seed that goes into the woman, and a child is born. But you know, that is a fleshly child, but it says we're born of the Spirit. When we're born again, the Word of God comes to us, and all of a sudden our ears prop up, and we're hearing things, and oh yeah, I like that, God can forgive me, he can take all my guilt away and he can help me, this, that and the other. When we receive that seed, we're born again. If we really truly believe like Peter, thou art the Christ, if we can say that to ourselves, to God, we're born again of the incorruptible seed. And something is born in you again. It, but it's of the spirit this time, it's not the fleshly, it's from God. A new person has arrived in you. You've changed your mind. Instead of looking that way, you're looking that way. And you're thinking, oh, right, this is the way God says go. And oh, I believe that. I accept it. I think I'm going to do this, you know. I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to repent of my sins, you know. And what we see emerging is a new person. He says we're new creatures in Christ. All the old is done away with. We start turning away from the things that don't, please God and we start following the things that do please God. So that is what born again is, you see. We become a new person, we've got a new, we've got our eyes on Jesus and the way and we believe in him instead of believing our feelings which are up and down all the time, aren't they? You know, but Jesus stands firm, his word, his word never changes, you know. And as we hold on to that, we will be firm and we won't change except change to be like him, you know. So we are born again, and it's just, it's very similar to the birth and conception. It is a personal moment when a man and woman conceive, a child, a seed, a child is born. And so when we come to Christ, it is a very personal moment for every individual that we receive the seed, the living word of God, that's totally changed our lives and the way we see things. And it's a continuation, it's a process. It goes on, doesn't it? So, it's an intimate time. Uh, so, has that happened to you? Or is it beginning to happen to you? Ask yourself. When we come to God, we ask ourselves serious questions, you know. It's not frivolous lifestyle anymore, like in the world partying and all that sort of stuff. It's important stuff, what we're getting from God, you know, to change our lives. Um, we receive the incorruptible seed. It's incorruptible. My old nature was corrupt. Drugs, women, whatever. But now we've got an incorruptible seed, an incorruptible nature that's developing in us, that's Christ-like and we're becoming more like him. That's wonderful, isn't it? Good news. Um, <coughs> so, and people, you know, when someone is pregnant, we notice it, don't we? Some, some, you're out there somewhere. Something's going on on the inside, but something's also going on the outside, and people around notice the difference in you. And you know, when we've been born again, people notice the difference in us, that we're not no longer doing some of the things. Little things drop off here and there. We're not doing certain things anymore. And they notice that. But it's, it's a good thing what they're noticing. It's not a bad thing. They might not like it because we don't follow the same pattern as they do anymore, but they can see the quality that's coming out in our lives. It is a good thing. 
Um, being born again, I like what it says in King James, it says uh, we're being born again. Being means process. So we're continually developing and becoming like Christ. I'm not like Christ, I've got lots of areas in my life that God's dealing with and, and will be dealing with. So, but the thing is, the source I was born, birthed from, was the Word of God, Christ. I've got to continue feeding from that, like a baby keep, continues feeding from the mother, its mother. We f continue feeding from God, we was birthed from God. Continue feeding from his word. It's either milk, it says that receive the milk, sincere milk of the word. It's a bit like a birth picture, isn't it? You know? But the word of God is like milk. Or some people might want some meat. They want to get stuck into a steak. Something deep in God, you know. Which is good, you know. But it's a process. We're always being born again. We're always evolving in Christ's likeness as we follow his teachings and follow his word as much as we're able, because we're all different, we all fall down and get up and fall down and none of us are perfect, except Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> he was the perfect man. Oh, I just saw that the other week, it, was, it brought tears to my eyes. That Jesus was the perfect man. He was without sin. Ah, oh, and he overcome all those difficulties that we possibly go through. And as we look to him, we can learn to overcome through looking to him, you know. So, uh, what gets in the way of us stopping, growing and developing? Like a child, you know, uh, what gets in the way? Um, uh, it says in uh, Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. <coughs> you know, by leaning not on your own understanding, it says lean not on your own understanding. This can limit God from working on, in us. We can get sidetracked by this, that or the other or, and just move away from drawing from God. You can live by what you feel, what you see and that, we all know that's up and down, isn't it? Instead of continuing what we first believe and trusted in God's word because he alone knows better. I mean, obviously, there are some things you've got to lean on your own and say, and if I, if I do my whole story, I've got to be careful how I do it. And <laughs> But I think what, what it means here is, lean not on your own understanding, is in moments where you don't understand what's going on and God gives you something from the Word, some, a bit of wisdom, a bit of insight, it's in moments like that we've just got to trust God. We might not understand it. Many a time I haven't understood what God says, you know, but we believe it. Because... Um, <coughs> You know, Jesus said, whoever believes in me shall receive eternal life. He didn't say whoever, whoever knows everything, who's got the IQ, the biggest IQ, you know. I mean, that'll leave me out for a start, you know. But the thing is, I had to come to the place myself where I realised, God, I don't understand this, but because I trust you and I love you, I'm going to trust you, I'm going to believe in you. And some of the time we've got to be like that, we might not understand everything, but we've just got to say, God, I'm going to believe you. Does that make sense? I'm not giving them out too full on for you this morning. <laughs> but um, uh, also, you know, as um, it says in 2 Corinthians 5 7, we live by faith, not by sight. Before I was a Christian, I lived by sight. Oh, that looks good. I like that fashion. I'll try that out. And oh, I like that beer. <laughs> So I live by sight and I love, live by feelings. And you know what, when we live by sight and live by feelings, we're all over the place. Because our feelings might take us in with a group of people and we'll be off doing this and doing that and doing all the wrong things. You know, but Jesus, God says, we don't live by sight, we live by faith in God's word. Because God's word is immovable, it doesn't change. Our feelings do. You know, so if I live by what I see every day and what I felt like, I'd be going all over the place, wobbly. But I've got to put my faith in God's word that holds me still. It, it says his word is an anchor to your soul. A soul. I'll give you a little illustration. If you can imagine a hard-boiled egg, there's a shell, the white bit, and there's the yolk in the middle. 
The shell is your body, the white bit is your emotions, your mind, what you're thinking, all your feelings, you know, all the wobbly bits, <laughs> they go up and down all the time. And the yellow bit in the middle is your spirit. But it says God's word, for those who trust him, his word is an anchor to their soul. So the bit that's going all over the place is an anchor. That means it can hold you firm when you can't do it, you know, he can. If we trust him. So that's exciting, isn't it? Faith also, what you say, what is faith? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. If Jesus said something to you today, I can take all your guilt away and I can cleanse your conscience from all those bad things. Is that a good thing? And the, the second stage is, do you want to know? <laughs> if you want to know, then you can come into that. So that's what faith is. Faith comes by hearing what God's got to say. Uh, not what necessarily what anyone else has got to say, but what God's, if it's based on the word of God, yeah. What God's got to say. Faith comes by hearing God's word. We, we rise up and think, oh, crummy, can I actually deal with all my problems and take all my cares away? It gets you going, doesn't it, in that direction. I want to know more about this. So it's all positive, isn't it? As a believer, faith needs to be active from day one, up to date. We need to keep it up to date, our faith. If I lived by certain feelings, I wouldn't have any work now, personally. I'm going to give you a little testimony now to finish off. <laughs> if I lived by what I saw, I wouldn't be working in minimum station anymore because I can't see nothing happening. No work coming in, you know. I mean, who wants antiques restored in minimum? You know, who wants this or that? But I don't live by sight, and I haven't for 38 years, you know. And I live by faith in what God says. And he, you know what? He doesn't provide a hundred times out of a hundred. He's never done what I wanted him to do, when and how I wanted him to do it. But you know what? He's done it. Hallelujah. And the key there is, you know, seeing myself when we were converted, financially we were on the edge, still am, but God supplies, you know. Um, uh, we started out trusting God's word, then you know what happened? God started doing things and knocks on the doors and, and we never ever would tell anybody about our financial situation because we'd be a fool to do that because we're putting thoughts into people's minds to help us, you know. We want to see God do it. And, and, and we just, money would come through the door, all sorts of unusual things would happen from time to time, not every day of our lives, like, you know, it wasn't that good. <laughs> but we started by trusting God's word, and where we went wrong is we started leaning on our own understanding. And it says, don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. We started thinking, ah, oh, I've got to pay this big bill now, and I've got no money coming in. It could happen this way, it could happen that way. And we started relying on our own understanding of how things are going to happen, how someone's going to get healed, how someone's going to get this or that. And do you know what? Like I said, a hundred times that hundred, God never did it the way we expected. So every time we started leaning on our own understanding, it didn't happen. It was like someone stuck a pin in the balloon. Our faith went flat on the floor, and we had to blow it back up again. And we, had to, we did that a lot of, for a few years until we realised we've just got to trust God's word. He works in mysterious ways, he's wonders to perform, and he's going to do it in his own time, in his own way. As long as we're trusting his word and keep hold of that as an anchor, he will do it. And that's how we, we live, you know, and we will live. Uh, um, and that way our faith is not deflated because we're not putting a time on God doing something. We're not putting a way on he's going to do it. He's going to do it because he says he's going to do it. And, it, and it, he always does it, you know. So, um, and when we depend on our understanding, instead of trusting God's word to do it his way, our faith you know, becomes deflated. From then on, we, we trusted God's word. Um, you know, at the age, uh, just, just a little bit of a test, part of a testimony. Uh, at the age of 22, I couldn't even change a fuse in the plug. So it gives you some idea what I was like. But when God revealed to me that 
Yeah, he's prepared works for each one of us. He's got a special path for each one of you, you know, and me. And none of us are different. We're not to be conformed to one another, but him, you know. But he's got something special for each one of you. I, I mean, I, I realised that God was talking about using your talents, and I studied it so much because I went into wood carving, and I, it talks about idols in the Bible, and I studied it for months and months in the Hebrew and Greek, and not that I can read that Hebrew and Greek, it's just the translations from it. Um, and I studied it because I was so worried that I was going into something that wasn't going to be right. I didn't want to be carving idols and, you know what I mean, God coming down on me, what, what are you doing? And, but I, I became a wood carver at the, at the age of 22 and I, I had my first contract which was £2,000. And um, that's something God gave me. I needed to be in my workshop with God because my life was so screwed up prior to that. I've been on drugs, prison, homes, army, merchant, you know, it's a crazy life I lived, went all over the world. And I needed to be somewhere where I was with God a lot to amend me, if you know what I mean, to restore me. And um, so I ended up getting a contract for £2,000 and uh, I, God brought a shed along, he brought a bit of machinery along and it was all God, I could tell you how he did it and how it happened. And this bit of architrave I car had to carve, it was about that long, sticking out of my shed. And it was all very fine leaves and, and it looked like it had been stamped out by a machine. And I, I carved that, it was my first contract, I carved that in tears. Because if I'd gone wrong, on one little bit of it, £2,000 38 years ago was a lot of money, believe me. <laughs> it was a lot of money. And from there on God showed me that he does want us to use our talents, you know, what you'd like to do. And um, I've been doing it ever since the 38 years. As you know, I work in the station and stuff like that. But God had given me that. And I want to tell you that for each one of you, God has prepared works beforehand for you. He's got a special pathway for you to follow. You might not think it's special at the moment. But I've been through horrendous times coming to, through to God. Believe me, scary times. Very scary times. I was four times suicidal at the age of 22. So you can imagine what state I was in when I came to the Lord. So I had to work through those things with God. But what I want to say is he's prepared works for you beforehand. He's got a special path, a lifestyle for each one of you, an individual lifestyle. And it's latching onto that and seeing what God's sharing with you. You know, he reaches you where you are. It's not like you've got to get up to where he is. And uh, I just want to encourage you with that. And just to finish, totally finish now, is if anybody feels that they want prayer, me to pray with them afterwards, then come and see me afterwards and uh, just we can have a time of sensitive prayer before the Lord. And